Saturday, May the 1st, 2021, and our first trip out in the boat after a long winter and the lockdown caused by the coronavirus pandemic. We will be departing from our home base of Preston Marina, heading five miles down the River Ribble, and then turning into the River Douglas to eventually lock onto the Rufford branch of the Leeds-Liverpool Canal. The boat is Island Lady, a Channel Island 22, a sturdy little twin diesel engined pilot boat styled motor cruiser which punches well above her weight. She normally plies the choppy waters off the Lancashire coast in the Irish Sea, but for this trip we will be taking her onto a canal for the very first time to experience a very different kind of boating. We have an almost identical running mate for this weekend's trip, Billy Blue, another Channel Island 22, also based at Preston Marina. We leave our berth and pass through the open swing road bridge to enter the lock chamber. Here, the water level is matched with the constantly changing height of the tidal river. We are departing at around one hour before high tide. So, as we leave, we'll be pushing against the last of the incoming flood, still running at the best part of two knots against us. The lock still uses the original gates made of mighty Greenheart timber which have been in operation almost continuously since Preston Dock opened in 1892. We make our way slowly through the smaller outer tidal basin and approach the taller outer gates which offer storm and flood protection for the docks. Our ship's complement of my wife Leslie and our two dogs settle in for the voyage. Once we emerge from the gates, we pass the rounded key wall end, known locally as the Bullnose, which marks our entry into the Ribble. We pass the ruined remains of the landing jetty for the dredgers and pilot boats which served the port of Preston in the commercial days of the dock, before its closure in 1981. The river channel is marked by vertical posts known as perches. The perches sit on top of two stone walls on either side of the river running from the docks to open sea, built by the Victorians to train the constantly incoming and outgoing tide in order to help nature to scour and maintain the navigable channel. After five miles, we approach an area on the north bank of the river known as the Nays, with Freckleton Creek running to the little village of Freckleton, which in the 19th century was a rope and sailcloth manufacturing centre for the local boat building industry, which was dotted around the Ribble at the small ports of Lytham and Hesketh Bank. On our port side, we pass a very conspicuous tripod shaped perch. This is the Astland or five mile from Preston perch. This marks our entry into the River Douglas. We must keep the perch on our port side as we turn, otherwise we may run aground on a large sandbank, or worse, strike the stone training wall. As we turn south into the Douglas, all are very relaxed aboard Island Lady. A right hand bend in the river reveals the Douglas Boatyard, still a busy boat building and repair facility providing vital services to local boat owners. We slow down so as not to disturb the moored boats with our wakes. After another mile or so, we arrive at the sea lock at Tarleton, which will give us access to the Rufford branch of the Leeds-Liverpool Canal. The tide is turning and a swirling eddy current at the entrance to the lock requires careful boat handling and so filming has to take a back seat, but we will be returning through this lock the following day and we'll get better video footage then. Once through the lock, we are on the canal. Our schedule is now our own, not being dictated by the tides which usually dominate our boating. The pace of life slows right down, as must our boats be, to no more than four miles per hour to keep washed down and protect the banks. Water users are required to have a license to contribute towards the upkeep of the system. 
we have bought a 30-day Explorer license, giving us access to the network for any 30 days within a 12-month period. For casual visitors to the inland waterways like us, this is a perfect arrangement. There is work to do along the way, with swing bridges to open every few miles, and Leslie becomes very adept at hopping ashore to let us through. There are also low bridges along the way that we must pass under. According to the guidebooks, it will be touch and go as to whether Island Lady's roof-mounted radar scanner will fit under some of these, adding some spice to the voyage. We did fit, just. We wind our way for around five miles through the tranquil countryside to arrive at our destination, the charming St Mary's Marina in the pretty village of Rufford. Tied up on the visitor berth, we stroll into the village to seek an evening meal, which we have great success in finding at the Hesketh Arms pub, before returning for a cosy night on board. The next morning, after a hearty breakfast at the marina's excellent cafe and bistro, we are underway again to make our way home. The canal towpath is popular with walkers and joggers taking their morning exercise, and our four-legged shipmates enjoy doing so also, with Island Lady motoring along beside a walking pace. We arrive at the visitor moorings at Tarleton to await the tide for our lockout. And with all the low bridges now behind us, we can remount our navigation masts and radio aerials in preparation for being back on the tidal waters. The lock has been readied for us by Roger and the friendly team from Tarleton Boatyard. We creep into the lock chamber slowly and the two boats snugly fitting side by side. The handles are wound to open the sluice gates which drop us down to the level of the river. This operation has been timed for around one hour before this afternoon's high tide so we are expecting to face an oncoming flow against once we emerge from the lock. We are released and we begin to retrace our steps down the River Douglas. Back at the Astland Perch again, this time we must keep it to starboard to ensure safe entry into the ripple. The tide is once again in charge of our schedule, and Island Lady picks up her skirt to 11 knots to make sure we arrive back at Preston in plenty of time, and before the lock there finishes operations, two hours after the point of high water, after which there would not be enough depth for us to enter. The sailing yacht that we saw approaching Preston yesterday now returns to her home base of Lytham. After a short while, we see the bullnose and the entrance to Preston docks and the two distinct tall blue masts of the swing bridge telling us we are nearly home. The green traffic light on the bullnose tells us that we are clear to enter the outer basin. The gauge on the key wall as we enter the dock tells us that the height of the tide at this moment is 8.6 metres. All tide times and heights are referenced from the local standard port of Liverpool. 
We join a Colvick motor sailor in the lock when we arrive, just at the point of slack water, that brief point in time when the tide has stopped coming in and is slowly turning around and starting to ebb away again. The bridge swings for us, and Leslie is very glad that this one is operated at the touch of a button by the lock keeper in the pyramid-shaped control building. Back home at Preston Marina and our berth after a very successful first mini cruise up the cut.